The answer to this equation would directly power your GPS, quantum computers, and create the device you are watching this video on right now. Let's solve it ourselves by first subtracting 1 from both sides, giving us x squared equals negative 1. Here's where the issue arises. If we look at this number line, we see that if we square any number, negative or positive, our answer will be positive. You can't square a number and get a negative number, which is why many mathematicians deem this impossible. Until mathematicians created a new number. They called it i and defined it as the square root of negative 1. This means i squared equals negative 1. It was labeled as the imaginary number. But that's not where this story ends. We also have to ask where does this number lie? It doesn't lie in our real axes, so we have to create a second dimension, the imaginary axes. Together, they form the complex plane where each point represents a number like 2 plus 3i. These are called complex numbers, and they contain a real part, a, and an imaginary part, bi. Here's another interesting observation. Multiplying by i doesn't just change the size, it hints at rotation. Start with a vector that goes from 0, 0 to 1, 0. Multiply the vector by i, and you get i, because 1 times i is i, which leads to a 90 degree turn. Multiply by i again, you get negative 1, since i squared is negative 1. Multiply by i again, you get negative i because negative 1 times i is negative i, and multiply by i again, you get 1 because negative i times i is 1. This phenomenon regarding rotation led to the discovery of this equation, e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. And if you plug in pi for theta, you can see that you get an answer of negative 1 because cosine of pi is negative 1, sine of pi is 0, so negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. This single equation connects five fundamental constants in a single relationship. And it's not just rotation. Imaginary numbers show up in so many aspects of life, from Schrodinger's equation to AC circuits. The constant, which we called imaginary, eventually became something very real, something ingrained in our day-to-day -day lives. Let me know what I should explain next.